Hi, I am Tarun Mittal, consultant cardiac radiologist. In this session, I'm going to take you through the anatomy of the heart, including the coronary arteries as seen on CT angiography. We will try to understand the anatomy of the heart in three sections. The first section would be the anatomy of the non-coronary cardiac structures, including the cardiac chambers, the valves, surrounding pericardium, and the thoracic aorta and pulmonary vessels. In second section, we will go through the anatomy of the coronary arteries, and then the last we'll look at the anatomy of the cardiac veins. CT is an excellent technique to demonstrate anatomy as the images that are acquired are volumetric in nature, which allow them to be displayed and manipulated in any plane. I would be presenting this talk in slides as well as on a workstation software so that you get a flavor of the anatomy in real time. First, let's look at the orientation of the heart. So heart lies in the central part of the chest in the mediastinal space behind the sternum, which we can see here in the central image, bounded by the pleura on both sides, which we can see here, above the diaphragm, and is connected to the vascular structures, both superiorly as well as inferiorly. Now heart projects more to the left side of the sternum with the apex of the heart pointing to the left side and inferiorly. It is surrounded by the pericardium, which extends all the way up to the arch, as you can see on this image to the left. This is a volume rendered image of the heart in the thoracic aorta as viewed from the front of the body. So the most anterior surface of the heart is the right ventricle, which is the chamber shown here. On the right side of the right ventricle is the right atrium, and part of the right atrium is the right atrial appendage, which is seen as a broad projection arising from the right atrium. Now, the right ventricle leads into the right ventricular outflow tract, which is a structure here, leading from the right ventricle superiorly, and which in turn leads into the main pulmonary artery, and the main pulmonary artery will be dividing in subsequent branches. And the apex of the heart is part of the left ventricle, which is the chamber on the left side of the right ventricle and also posteriorly. The left ventricle leads into the aortic root posterior to the right ventricle outflow tract, which in turn leads into the ascending aorta. On the right side of the ascending aorta is the superior vena cava or the SVC, which would be joining the right atrium inferiorly here. Then all the branches that we see on the left side as well as on the right side are the branches of the pulmonary veins as well as of the pulmonary arteries. Now, when we look at the images on CT in axial plane, we are looking at the body as if we are viewing it from below or from the foot end. So patient's right side is on our left side and patient's left side is on our right side. And generally the right and left are labeled on the CT images. The anterior and posterior are also labeled but if they're not labeled, then we can determine them by structures which we know are present normally anteriorly or posteriorly. For example, in this case, in the chest, we have the sternum anteriorly and the spine posteriorly. Let us start by going through the images of the heart and thoracic aorta in axial plane. So on your left side is a topogram, which we will use as a reference image. So this section, which is an axial plane, is passing through the center of the heart. And here you can see with this red line, reference line. So as we all know, the heart has four chambers, two ventricles and the two atria. So the chamber that is most anterior is the right ventricle. And then we have the right atrium posterior to the right ventricle. Most posterior chamber of the heart is the left atrium and then behind the right ventricle is the left ventricle. Now, the two ventricles are separated or divided by the interventricular septum, which is the muscle here. The two atria are divided by what is called as the atrial septum. We can see here a thin structure, which is a part of the interventricular septum and is called the membranous septum. And the thin part in the atrial septum is called the fossa ovalis. In the right ventricle, we have several muscular bands, the largest one of which is called the moderator band. In the left ventricle, we have several muscular structures, 
which are called the papillary muscles. And we have the mitral valve, the two leaflets of the mitral valve we can see here. Then the structures that are leading into the left atrium are the pulmonary veins, and two of which we can see here. This image is higher compared to the previous image. And here we can see the space which is leading from the left ventricle and is called the left ventricular outflow tract or LVOT. In the right atrium, there is a soft tissue structure which is attached to the right lateral wall of the atrium and is called the crystal terminalis. It should not be mistaken for a thrombus or a soft tissue mass. On this image, we can also see various grooves between the cardiac chambers. The most anterior groove here is between the right atrium and the right ventricle and is called the anterior atrioventricular groove. On the posterior aspect, we have a groove between the left atrium and left ventricle, posterior atrioventricular groove. And in between the two ventricles is a groove called the interventricular groove. Now these grooves are, are occupied by fat and it is the epicardial coronary arteries that run within these grooves. We will come to the coronary arteries and the anatomy later. Now further higher up as we go, we see that the left ventral outflow tract now has led into the aortic root with the three cusps or valves. Anterior to the aortic root is the right ventricular outflow tract. More on the right side is part of the right atrium and the right atrial appendage laterally here. And most posterior structure is the left atrium. This soft tissue is part of the anterior wall of the left ventricle. Other structures that we see opacified here are the pulmonary vessels. What we are seeing posteriorly is part of the descending thoracic aorta. We will come to the anatomy of the thoracic aorta in a moment. Now, as we go slightly further up, now we can see from the aortic root, there is an artery that is arising, which will be the right coronary artery as it is arising anteriorly. On the left side, posteriorly, we have the left coronary artery. We will be looking at the anatomy of the coronary arteries a bit later. Now, again, we have the right ventricular outflow tract anteriorly, which will be leading into the main pulmonary artery. On the right side of the aortic root, we have the right atrial appendage with the pectinate muscles. Most posterior structure is the left atrium. And here we can see the pulmonary veins on the right side and on the left side draining into the left atrium. This triangular structure is the appendage of the left atrium. A bit further up, now we have gone from aortic root into the proximal part of the ascending aorta. On the right side, we have the right ventricular outflow tract leading into the main pulmonary artery, the superior part of the right atrial appendage. Now this structure here is the SVC, which will be joining into the right atrium. On the right side, we have the anterior structure posterior to the SVC, is the right superior pulmonary vein. And this structure is the part of right pulmonary artery. And on the left side, this is part of the left pulmonary artery and the branches of the left pulmonary artery are here. And this triangular structure is again the left atrial appendage. So we have to remember that the pulmonary veins lie between the SVC and the pulmonary artery branches. This image shows the left main coronary artery arising from the aortic root. Now, slightly higher up, now we can see the proximal part of the ascending aorta. Now, this is the main pulmonary artery dividing into the right and the left main branches. Posterior to the ascending aorta, we see the superior vena cava or the SVC. Posteriorly, on the right side of the spine, we see the descending thoracic aorta. Now, these two structures that contain air are the right and left main bronchi. The space between the two bronchi is called the carinas, and the various other structures are the branches of the pulmonary arteries and veins. Now, this level of the bifurcation of the main pulmonary artery and the carina is a very important level. It is at this level that we measure the size of the 
ascending aorta, as in most cases, the maximum dilatation of the ascending aorta in patients with aortic aneurysms occur at this level. This is also the level where we plan our cardiac CT, both calcium scorings as well as angiograms from starting at this level. This is also the level where we bolus track or we test for the arrival of the peak enhancement of the contrast in the thoracic aorta. Now above the level of the carina, now we have the trachea is just above the carina level. Now we are also above the level of the main pulmonary artery. As you can see here on this coronal image reconstruction, this is the main pulmonary artery here, the right pulmonary artery and the left pulmonary artery going above the left main bronchus. This is part of the ascending aorta, aortic arch. So we are just below the aortic arch and we are passing through the space between the aortic arch and the main pulmonary artery here. So this space, this window is also called the aortopulmonary window. And this is a, a space where abnormal lymph nodes can occur. Now this vascular structure here is the continuation of the ascending aorta just before it becomes or extends into the aortic arch. This structure here is a descending thoracic aorta. This is part of the SVC. And then we are seeing the branches of the pulmonary vessels on either side. Now we have come to the level of the aortic arch itself. The whole structure is the aortic arch. On the right side of the proximal part of the aortic arch is the SVC. And we see the trachea in the center and the posteriorly the soft tissue structure running all the way along on the posterior aspect of the trachea would be the esophagus. Now this is a reconstruction of the thoracic aorta in an oblique sagittal plane. Here we can see the entire thoracic aorta with its three components, mainly the ascending aorta, the aortic arch, and the descending thoracic aorta. We can also see the three branches arising from the Aortic arch, the first branch is the brachiocephalic artery, which will divide further into the right common carotid and the right subclavian artery. Second branch is the left common carotid artery, and the third branch is the left subclavian artery. Let us now look at these branches on axial plane. So we are now just above the aortic arch, and here we can see from the right to left, the most right structure is the right brachiocephalic vein. So on the left side, you have the left brachiocephalic vein, and it is these two brachiocephalic veins that will join together to form the SVC. And we can see here on this structure, the SVC is here, and the right brachiocephalic vein comes from the right side as an extension to the right subclavian vein, and the left brachiocephalic vein, which is not in this section, will come all the way from there, go anterior to the branches from the aortic arch and join the right brachiocephalic vein to form the SVC going down. Here we can see the left brachiocephalic vein is less opacified compared to the right because the contrast has been injected through the right arm. Now these three structures are the branches of the aortic arch. So we have the first one would be the brachiocephalic artery. The next one would be the left common carotid artery the third one would be the left subclavian artery. As you go higher up, we will, can see here that the brachiocephalic artery has divided into the right subclavian artery, which is more laterally on this image, and the right common carotid artery. As you go higher up, we can see the, the internal jugular veins on either side of the, what we see in the center is the trachea and surrounded by soft tissue structure enhancing with contrast and this is the, the, these are the two lobes of the thyroid gland and these are the internal jugular veins. We have the common carotid artery on the right side clearly seen here and on the left side is slightly more anterior which is uh, there where my arrow, arrow is and the subclavian arteries on either side are seen here going towards the arm. Now as you go further into the neck we can see the common carotid arteries on both sides accompanied anteriorly with the internal jugular veins on either side. 
Okay, let us go back to the center of the cardiac chambers. So coming back, now we can see the two ventricles, the two atria, the trabeculations in the right ventricle, the papillary muscles in the left ventricle, the two leaflets of the mitral valve. Now the leaflets of the tricuspid valve are generally quite thin and less visible on the CT scan. We can probably just make out the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. Now here we can also see that the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve is placed slightly more apically towards compared to the anterior leaflet of the mitral valve. And this is a morphological feature of the tricuspid valve, which is part of the right ventricle. As you go further below, towards the inferior aspect of the heart, we can see the right atrium, and this structure here is the IVC draining into the right atrium. And the other vascular structure that we see draining into the right atrium is the coronary sinus. And this will go up along the posterior surface of the heart. And the same is demonstrated by this image as well, the coronary sinus and the IVC. And as we go further down, here now we can see the IVC posteriorly, and this is the top part of the liver, a soft tissue. And this is a vein lying in the inferior interventricular groove along the posterior descending artery. We will come to this later. And this structure here is the descending thoracic aorta, which will soon become the abdominal aorta. And the soft tissue structure anterior to the descending aorta is the esophagus. Now let's talk a bit about the pericardium. So pericardium normally we see as a thin, a thin soft tissue structure surrounding the heart. Now this is not one layer of pericardium as is commonly believed, but is both the parietal as well as the visceral layers of the pericardium. Now there is a potential space between these two layers of pericardium as we see them together. And when there is an accumulation of fluid, the two layers of the pericardium can be seen separately. Now, the layer of fat that is between the pericardial layers and the myocardium is called the epicardial layer of fat. And the layer of fat that is outside the pericardium is called the pericardial fat. In this image, which is an MRI image, we can see there is a small amount of fluid in the pericardial space which has separated the visceral and the parietal layers from each other. And this shows that the two layers of the pericardium are normally opposed to each other with a potential space between the two. 